Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be tackling the floor. We're going to be building the subfloor in this Fiat Chicato van. As we did in our previous sprinter build, I'm going to be using timber battens to support the subfloor. And there's a number of reasons for doing that. We're going to be insulating with a PIR insulation board. Now this board is fairly substantial as it is. It is quite solid and it will withstand somebody standing on it. But over time, any sort of point loads, it is slightly compressible. I mean, you can see I've left my finger marks there in that board. And certainly in high traffic areas and areas where there's a considerable amount of weight, this PIR board will compress very slightly over time. So I want to give that some additional support, which is why we're using these timber battens. So every three or four hundred millimetres, I'm going to be having a batten fixed to the floor and then that will allow me to screw my timber plywood floor on top of that. Last time we used a roofing batten which was supplied by Wix. It was a pressure treated batten and it's used for hanging tiles on roofs. Now I've been on the website for Wix and currently they're about six pound each. So it's really expensive to buy. So obviously as this is a budget build, I wanted to save a bit of money. So what I've actually found is a local timber merchant, only 15, 20 minutes down the road here. And they've also got some roof battens, but I managed to get 10 of these, which were three meters long, exactly the same size, 25 mil thick, 50 mil. They're rough sawn timber, and I got 10 lengths for 20 pounds. So actually the equivalent that I would have bought from Wix would have cost me £60, about three times as much. So I've managed to get enough timber to do the whole floor for 20 quid. so I think that's a bit of a bargain. Right, we're going to do a couple of things. I'm going to stick these down to the floor with some Sikaflex, because that will take out any vibrations. Um, and then I'm also going to fix them down with some screws. And the main reason why I do that, a lot of people criticise me for drilling through the floor and oh you've got holes in the floor there won't be any holes because the screws are there and I can show you some pictures of the screws in the bottom of our sprinter van and they look exactly the same as the day I fitted them five years down the line so I know there's not a problem with that and I know there's no issues with rust make sure you treat them with wax oil underneath once you've put them in you will have no problems whatsoever right the first thing we've got to do is go and pick up some materials now I'm not going to use any of the big DIY stores because they're just far too expensive and the best thing I can do is I've looked on eBay for secondhand stuff I've also looked on marketplace on Facebook which has been brilliant to be honest and the good thing about marketplace is you can limit the search by distance so I put it down to 50 kilometers which is only about 30 miles so I'm just searching my local area for people that may have you know stuff that they don't need they've oversupplied or whatever and they just want to get rid of some cheap wood timber insulation and I've managed to pick up some sheets of plywood from a little fencing and shed company which is only 17 minutes down the road from where I live for 20 quid a sheet so you can't buy it for that in the big stores so that's a result and then we're just now on to another little place where they're selling some insulation, PIR slabs. And again, 18 pound a sheet. And I've looked everywhere and you can't buy it as cheap as that. So yeah, that's a bit of a result. We're just gonna pop in there now, pick up the insulation, and then that's pretty much all we need to insulate and line the van. So that'll be great. Right, so those plywood sheets actually turned out to be 10 by fives. So that's massively bigger than the eight before. So that's almost double the size, but he kept the price at 20 pound a sheet. So that's a huge result. And the insulation we just picked up 18 pound a sheet. That's really cheap as well. So enough to insulate the whole van and ply line, floor, ceiling, walls, whole thing for less than 200 pounds. Result. Well, we wake. 
birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy but things are finally right the future is bright oh, You and I, we got it oh, We don't need no more oh, Even in the hard time You and I can weather any Standard plywood sheets are 8 foot by 4 foot or 2440 millimetres by 1220 millimetres. So I'm going to measure off of the cab 1220 millimetres or 122 centimetres and that's going to be the middle of this batten because what I want is I want the joins in the floor to meet on this timber batten so they're well supported. What we did notice, little mistake in our first build if you like, I didn't put the joins of the boards directly on top of one of these battens. And as I was saying, where this foam has compressed over the years, even though I biscuited those joints in places, you can notice a slight little flex in the, in the timber floor because it hasn't got adequate support underneath. So another good reason for doing these timber battens. And I'm going to make sure that I've got a batten under the middle of every joint in this floor as we go down. So this is the critical one. I've measured the position of that. The rest I'm just going to equally space so it's got even amount of uh, distance. I'm using Sikaflex 522 which is the best stuff you can use for camper vans. I'm going to put a little blob on these high spots. I did mark the floor earlier with a pencil mark so I know where this needs to go back. The thing with any sealant or adhesive is you don't want to squeeze the whole lot out. You want to leave a little bit in there to actually do its job. If you squeeze it all out it basically won't work. So just a little bit of light pressure till you see a little bit maybe appear and then that's enough, we'll leave that, let that go off.
The theory behind putting these battens in here, this row here will be exactly where the front edge of the kitchen cabinets are going to be. So then I know I can get a really decent fixing through the floor into these ones there, all the way along that edge. These battens that run along here, we're going to have a little bench seat here. And again, the same thing, this row corresponds with the front edge of the bench seat. So again, I know I'm going to get a decent fix in there. And then towards the edge where the doorway is, there's going to be a lot of foot traffic there. So we've just doubled up a couple of extra battens just near the doorway. Now the battens are down, in between those we're going to be insulating with this PIR foam board. It's foil faced on both sides and PIR insulation is by far the best insulation to use. It's got the highest thermal properties of any of the insulation so we can get away with using a fairly small amount, 25 millimeters thick in this case and it will give us a really good well insulated floor. So a little tip on using the tape to mark these soft foil surfaces. I need them to be 13 inches or 330 millimeters. So hold my finger at that point and then if I run it down the edge of the board and use the end of the tape to score the foil, making sure that the 13 stays on the edge of the board with my finger that'll make a perfect parallel mark to the edge of this board. Just be careful when you're running your finger down there that you don't get a paper cut on the foil. But yeah, that's a quick way of doing it rather than just measuring it. That's it, make sure they're a nice snug fit and then after we've fitted all the insulation we'll come back and foil tape over all these battens and that will complete that vapour barrier on the floor.
bad mosquitoes, and I've got some one in up there. Um, and then I'm also going to fix them down with some screws. So what happened to you putting in the screws? I can hear you all saying it. Well, I came out the following morning after the Sikaflex had gone off, and I tried prising some of the uh, timber off the floor. And to be honest, it just proves how good that Sikaflex sealant is as an adhesive, because I could not get them off by hand. I mean, you'd have to literally prise them off with a crowbar. So I think in this instance, I'm happy not to add the screws. I don't regret doing it on my own van, and I think it has added a bit of extra strength, but really the Sikaflex is so good, I think you can just use that on its own. Right, let's get the rest of the foil tape and that vapour barrier finished off. So that's the floor battens down, insulation fitted and that vapour barrier complete. That just remains for us to put our new plywood on top of that and that will be the floor substructure done. We've uh, taken advantage of a break in the weather, we've had a lot of rain lately, it's been some nice sunny days. So we've actually fitted the uh, Max Air fan on top and I've also fitted the solar panels on top which is the start of the electrical system. So we've got a couple of good videos coming up next and uh, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. I hope you're enjoying this detailed Fiat Ducato camper van conversion. Do leave me a comment below. I've really enjoyed reading what you guys have had to say so far. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell notification, and then you won't miss those upcoming videos. So it just remains to say thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.